Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining today's webinar. I'd like to welcome you live from Berlin, Germany for today's webinar, Sustainable Hotel Management, the Top Trends in 2023. I'm Emily. I am the Junior Marketing Manager here at SweetPad, and I will be your co-host and moderator for today. First things first, I will quickly introduce the main speaker, Magdalena Rungaldier from MAP Boutique Consultancy. But before I hand over um, to Magdalena for kicking off the session, here's some more information. So this webinar will last about 45 minutes, which means 30 to 35 minutes for the actual presentation. And then you'll have 10 to 15 minutes for the Q&A part. So feel free to post your questions at any time during the webinar using um, the question chat window that you see on the GoToWebinar control panel to your right. And we will try to answer as many questions as possible. And we will also be recording this webinar, so you will receive a copy in the next few days. But without further delay, I will pass it over to you, Magdalena. Thank you so much, Emily, for the kind introduction. And from my end, I'm based here in Zurich, so Switzerland calling. It's a real pleasure to connect with all of you today and to discuss sustainable hotel management and its developments in 2023. I would say we dive straight into the topic and what we've learned at MAP is the practical, the better. Therefore, our journey together will bring us along a template that we have developed for our clients and partners to become more sustainable and also more successful in 2023. We will begin looking at the starting point, that's your sustainability status quo. And afterwards, we will walk along a framework we have developed at MAP, and we are going to discuss further later on, and we call it the four P's of sustainability, which are purpose, people, planet, and profit. And as Emily mentioned already, you will receive an email afterwards with this template and with further resources, insights, and so on to guide you along this sustainability journey. Of course, it's also always nice to know with whom you are traveling and with whom you are doing this journey. So let me shortly introduce MAP. We say we are MAP, we are based in Zurich, but I have a great team and we are working as well from Vienna in Austria, as well as from my home region, that's South Tyrol in the north of Italy. What we're the proudest of that we have clients all around the world and we are working mostly with boutique hoteliers, family businesses, business owners, and so on. You see as well the B Corp logo there, because also as MAP, we have been certified. So in our business practice, we are following the highest standards of environmental and social sustainability. Now, what are we doing every day? We say our aim is to map out a better future for people and planet. And of course, we know that's quite a big statement. So a few years ago, we started to develop a platform that is called the Sustainable Hotel. On this platform, you find a lot of resources, free insights, PDFs, and so on. But what's the most important for today is, and that will help you hopefully as well on your sustainability journey, is the framework we have developed. Because during our work, we realized that the most successful hotels follow a 4P approach to sustainability. That means they start with purpose, means they have a very clear compass. They know why they are doing what they're doing. And then they touch holistically on the free piece of sustainability. That's people, planet, and profit. Emily and I have a question now. 
And we would like to know from you, when you look at these four P's, purpose, people, planet, and profit, what's your strongest P? In which P have you activated the most sustainability activities? We give you as well another answer option, and that's, I have no freaking clue. And of course, if you just don't know or you're just starting out on your sustainability journey, of course, that's also totally okay. So please answer this question. Is it purpose? Give me some more time. Yeah. Planet or profit? Thank you, Emily. We'll give just a few more seconds for everyone to be able to answer everything, but I can see some progress already in some of the results that you can then comment on, Magdalena. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> That's amazing. I have a strong guess, but I'm happy to be surprised. Let's see. Let's see. So just three more seconds and then I will just close the poll and show you the results. Amazing. It's people and purpose. Honestly, I am surprised right now because most of the boutique hoteliers where I am doing like webinars, coachings, workshops, and so on, they're the strongest P is planet. But I mean, we have 40% in purpose, 43% in people, and then we move on with planet 30% and profit 13%. But then we have as well 20% with, I have no freaking clue. And that's also an answer we accept, of course. And which brings us already to the next topic. Because what we always say and what we see as well in the sustainability journey is that we need to have a clear starting point. We have a lot of, or one of the biggest questions we always get asked is, how do I start my journey? How do I continue my journey? How do I set priorities in my sustainability journey? And we always say, look, you have to be very clear what's your status quo. What does that mean? You have to know how many sustainability activities you have activated in which area and what impact do they have? Because as we all know, what you can't measure, you can't manage and you can't improve. So for 2023, our first recommendation would be note down all sustainability activities you're doing right now, categorize them in the respective area and do evaluate the outcome. Now, with the Sustainable Hotel, we have written six handbooks and included there are 440 action steps hoteliers can take now to become more sustainable. Exactly. We, you have your status quo, you already have an idea, oh, in this area, I might need to activate some further sustainability activities, but Let's be very clear on one thing, that every sustainability journey in 2023, but also generally speaking, should start with purpose. And here, if I remember right, 40% are already on the right track. I also would like to just emphasize a bit what purpose is because it's not one of the standard piece of sustainability. So what do we intend with it? Purpose is really a guiding compass. It's your why. Why are, doing, why are you doing what you do? Why do you want to make an impact? And let me be very clear about one thing. Purpose can never be profit. However, the most purposeful businesses are also more profitable. And here, what we are going to do with every P is we are going to have a look first at a mega trend. Then I give you our recommendation for 2023, and we will have a look at the best practice example. And the mega trend that will influence 
this field of sustainability over the next years is purposeful business. We all know that in the market right now, there is a huge loss of trust of consumers. Look out there, look online, look through the social media channels. It's like consumers have such a wide choice. And so in 2020, there were two big studies that showed purposeful business, this trend might be a solution. The first one was done by the Zeno Group, who said, and it was a global study, 82% of consumers proactively bought from a company where they believed in their, in their purpose. And on the other hand, Panta Group found out that if your brand has a strong purpose, you can grow at more than twice the rate than other brands. We have a lot of discussion right now in the hospitality area. How are we going to find employees, the right employees, strong employees? And Bain just recently released another study that said the secret weapon in the new war for talent is purposeful business. What else can, could we recommend than saying, look, please for 2023 start with the purpose and identify what is the one thing that you and your team really want to achieve change or serve in 2023 as mentioned i'm sitting right here right now here in zurich and in zurich we have the sin and gewin hotels and they have a very clear purpose to have a positive impact on society, specifically on women. They, as you see, have a very clear guiding compass. And they also know that they are going to prioritize their sustainability activities in the P, the social sustainability. So every year they develop new activities to further move onwards their purpose. <clears throat> I'm sorry. For example, they are doing specifically training and employment for women. They are renting out rooms to women facing challenging circumstances, and they are focusing and embracing diversity very much. You know your starting point, you have started with purpose, then let's move on to people. People is social sustainability and people talks about what impact your hotel has on stakeholder groups directly but also indirectly four key stakeholder groups are of course your guests your employees the local community and your partners you see already step to build a strong and diverse team now when we worked with this template with our clients they were like yeah i'm searching for team members now you tell us uh, we need a very strong and diverse team and we told them look with this mega trend there is a huge chance for us and the mega trend is the gender shift Gender roles already since years are shifting and all of the trends we are presenting today have been have received a huge boost with the pandemic. And what do we see now? The value of diversity in business and politics is growing. Just go on LinkedIn, see the post where there is a new board presented and there are sitting in there six white men and then read through the comments. You might know this is very much true. This discussion has changed. And we are not only talking here about gender shift. We would also like um, amplify it and talk about other kinds of diversity. It can be religious, ethno-racial, and so many cultural backgrounds we could talk about, but also inclusivity. What we always say is, first of all, Job seekers nowadays, Glassdoor found out in 2022, 76% want to work 
for a diverse employer. And even more important, a study by McKinsey in 2020 showed that if you are more diverse, in this case, you have implemented ethno-racial practices, you are 36% more likely to be profitable. We have already learned purpose is good for business and we see building strong and diverse teams, it is as well. Therefore, our advice, take this action in 2023, have a good look at how your hotel staff is composed, what's the makeup of it. We also would like to say, look at your nonverbal communication. And here in Zurich, in Switzerland, we have the Gisla protocol. They say, for example, in photography, and this would also include, of course, your hotel photography. If you can exchange the woman pictured with a plant or with a puppy, it's a discrimination. And that means women checking out your hotel, if they would like to apply for you, might not like that too much. And the most important point is, we always say bright, inclusive job ads. And here we move on to our best practice and talk about Wittiworks. Wittiworks develops, so we are, Emily, in your field, in the field of technology, and they are working with a software that uncovers the bias in our language. Because when our language has a lot of bias in there, that is excluding a lot of people. And for example, in hospitality, a lot of hotels still use the word blacklist without knowing that it turns back to the times of slavery. When the good people, the white ones, went to the whitelist and the bad people, the black ones, went to the blacklist. The racist bias is straight there. And so by using witty, you realize, wow, our language is excluding a lot of people. And especially when we talk about job ads. And this is the first step. You have to need to have diverse people apply to your job ads so that you can build a strong and diverse teams. And you find on our platform a free PDF that shows six elements of inclusive and attractive job ads. And I would like to point out once that is deeply connected with what we discussed right now with the gender shift and that you should build a diverse team. Because in job ads, there is a golden rule and it says, do not list more than four requirements. And when you go out there, you see most of hotel job ads have 10 requirements, even more. Why is this so important? Women have been socialized to be very sincere and very honest. Studies show that women apply to job ads only if they fulfill 90 to 100% of requirements. Men are a bit easier on it. They already apply when they make it to 40 to 60%. What does it mean? If you list 10 requirements, you exclude women and a lot of newer generations, not because they are not that competent, but because they have been socialized differently. We know now you have a purpose, you are building a strong team, let's move on to planet. In the section of planet, we talk about how your hotel is respecting, using and taking, uh, taking care of the resources of our planet. And interestingly, in most of the talks that I'm giving, that's also the area where the most sustainability activities have been activated already. And it's also the area where we have a lot of providers, solutions, and so on. Now we have the trend neo-ecology. 
the new ecology. And what does that mean for your business? That in the end, you do not need to justify anymore what you are doing in the field of environmental sustainability. It's expected. So you don't have to state you aren't using plastic straws anymore, washing towels every day, and so on. It also implies a shift, and you see that our third step is that you should review your communication. Why? It's this new ecology, this new decade we are entering. It's not anymore about whom to blame. We leave that field of flight shaming and so on. It's also not anymore about renunciation, but about what we gain for it. So neoecology says we are shifting from the negative to the positive. And we also have to follow it in our communication. How are we doing that? Emily will talk about that afterwards in more detail because it's really through the fusion of people and technology. And what's so important for our hotel is that we will need to rethink the logic of hospitality brands and marketing. That's also where our advice comes in. Review your communication and make sure, I'm repeating it again, start with purpose. This gives you the trust of consumers. This gives also the why you are doing all of that. Avoid greenwashing, no further comment on that. It will backfire like nothing in the times we are living in. Keep it positive. There's the shift and please keep it ethical. I'm not sure if you have received that many emails as I've received about hotels doing good. And I love it, I'm thankful for it. But if we are entering the field of social sustainability, it can get a very weird taste. You should never try to profit from difficult situations people are in. We have, for example, a partner hotel in Antigua de Guatemala. They're doing amazing things for the local community and they're not communicating anything. Why? They said the last thing they would like to have seen happen is that people come there to save the poor people. That's not what's intended there. So do not communicate it if you profit from uh, challenging situations of other people. Now, of course, we have talked with Martin Stockburger. He's the CEO of the Concept Hotels. He's a partner at the Sustainable Hotel. And he always says, I'm not running a sustainable hotel. I am managing my hotel in a sustainable way. So he always says, do not become dogmatic. And also avoid being overly pushy. That's your way, that's okay. Others are doing other things, and that's also okay. What you also always should remember, keep it conversational and don't complicate things. Sometimes when we then talk about sustainability, there are coming a lot of stats and facts, and we need them sometimes. But when you talk to your guests, keep it conversational, keep it positive as we learned. We are doing this because we like it and because we would like to achieve this with our purpose. That's all. And the last thing is, don't take anything away from guests. And that's what we see very often in the communication. No, you don't get fresh washed towels anymore every day. But word it differently. Tell them what they gain. So concept hotels, for example, in their hotel in Tübingen, they have a beautiful meadow in front and they are not mowing it anymore. But they're not saying, no, you can't use now this meadow anymore to their guests. They're saying, we are doing something for biodiversity. And soon we will have there a lot of bees and butterflies. That's another way to word it. And once you have reviewed your communication, we invite you to take the next step in the area of profit the economic sustainability 
and that area finds or we are trying to find out there how your hotel can be the most profitable for all not only for you and imagine that in 2023 we have a mega trend kindness economy who thought that economy can be kind if we lived through decades when it was all about growth competition profit but also here over the next years and decades we will see a huge shift a shift where also guests and here of course i'm generalizing if you are running a budget hotel if you are running a hostel the price is very much important but when we look at the grand scheme of things we can say guests do not look only at the price anymore but also question where's the product coming from how do you treat your employees what's the culture here at the hotel and so on so it's all moving to a kinder environment at map we are saying people plus purpose makes profit and people it's your people employees guests it's the local community but also the partners it's no surprise or it's a given that the 17th SDG is about partnerships. This will be a crucial success factor over the next years because we as a lonely player in the market can't anymore. Um, we aren't able anymore to comprehend all the changes happening. So we have to partner, we have to think in networks, we have to use technology, we have to build communities. And therefore, stop seeing yourself as an individual player. This is not that will bring you through the next years. Reach out to existing partners, find new ones, and start to create synergies and of course, as well, a bigger impact. And we have, for example, a client in the north of Italy in the Valle Maira, which is one of the most authentic alpine valleys that you can still find in the alpine area. And it's called the Locanda Mistral. It's a very small hotel and it has on, on their website, if you would like to have a look, around 30 partners. Partnering is how they create synergies, how they spread the words, how they also support local producers. And Renato Botte, the owner says, it's amazing to see that through their work, people in the valley can live and love what they do, produce, for example, local whatever. And they also partner with huge sports brands, for example, as Vaudet, Castle, or with other hotels. So this will be another crucial success factor and we, to go back to our overview and template, say that's the last step. So really first start and be very, very clear. What's your starting point? Move on to your purpose, build a strong and diverse team, review your communication, and last but not least, build sustainable partnerships where Emily, We'll tell you now more about how also technology can help you with all of this. Thank you, Magdalena. Very insightful information. Um, so, of course, us SweetPad experts in technology, we will start in asking ourselves how technology can play this key role in helping hotels become more sustainable. And I will give you practical examples and ideas. So the first would be energy management. Here, I mean smart building systems and Internet of Things devices that can be used to monitor and control the energy consumption in hotels, such as by automatically adjusting lighting, temperature and ventilation best based on the occupancy levels of the hotel. Um, these systems can help also hotels reduce their energy consumption, lower their carbon footprint, save costs, etc. 
And then um, the second part would be the water management. It could be technology like smart irrigation systems, low flow shower heads that can be used to reduce the water consumption in hotels. And additionally, there would be sensors and meters that we can also use to monitor and track the water usage, helping hotel staff identify and address any leaks or other issues as fast as possible. Um, so as an idea here at SweetPad, for example, we do in-room tablets. Um, we can help in this feat with our green option feature, which offers guests the choice to abstain from room cleaning on the days of our choice. So Magdalena kind of um, talked about this also, instead of having clean towels every day here, the guest has control in choosing whether or not they would like um, them to clean it every day. And uh, as a communication incentive, the hotel can give uh, different examples for, for instance, a donation to a charity or a nonprofit environmental association or extra points in their loyalty program, a complimentary discount in the hotel bar, for example. We've had some customers use that as well. Um, so these are some true examples as well. And you can see the results on the screen here. This is from a wellness hotel in Bad Sarau in Germany. They saved in their first month uh, 1,476.60 euros. And this is counting um, cost of cleaning, which they gave us, which is 12.84 euros, and counting the green option in the first month 115 times chosen. Um, so we calculated and the hotel saved 30,000 uh, euros more or less in room cleaning in the first year with the SweetPad in-room tablet. So as you can see, these, this type of device, uh, the initial investment was already totally refinanced within the first month with the amount that you can see the hotel here had already saved. So Magdalena, if you can change the slide now, we will continue on in um, the ideas. So the next one would be green meetings as well. Here it would be technology like digital signs, live streaming or video conferencing like we are doing now. This would help facilitate virtual meetings, um, which can be more environmentally friendly than in-person meetings for a number of reasons. And then lastly, digitalization, of course. So this, by digitizing their operations, hotels can reduce the use of paper, saving on the cost of printing, storage, and transportation as well. And this, uh, so next slide as well, will show you an example, another example of in-room tablets. So as a digital guest engagement platform, this replaces, of course, the guest directory that you would find in the hotel rooms, which saves, of course, a lot of paper that you would otherwise have to change every season or for every new event, every change in hotel services or offers for every single room of the hotel. And on uh, as an additional um, help as well, so in the other <laughs> um, slide, sorry, Magdalena, um, in the admin panel, for example, you can automatically for all of the rooms at the same time, replace the room service menu, update any information on trips and tours, send your guests welcome message for a little bit more of this personalization. Um, you can also change and publish your content on there and, and see also traffic in numbers and orders as well, collect the data and the revenue generated. So this can also be a help for the communication part of to be more sustainable with the hotel, which Magdalena also talked about pr previously, um, for a more optimized guest communication and here within the hotel room. So on the next slide, we can see we can ask ourselves, how does technology actually elevate the guest experience? We already talked about it a little bit, but here as technology modernization examples, um, hotels where guests can check in and check out using only their mobile devices, so they don't need to wait in line at the front desk, or they can use their mobile devices to open their room doors, so there's no need for this physical room key. And both these give these options give the guests freedom and the control of their stay at the hotel, which people, the guests, they do love that, having control in everything on during their stay. 
And a next example are smart mirrors. This is a little bit more rare. Um, they display information such as weather, news, news any, any time of the day and uh, control room settings as, as well. Um, Another example is digital art. This is not, um, see, this is pretty rare as well. So this is where guests can actually display in the room any art that, that they choose. And this can be controlled via an, a mobile app, for example. And this can actually enhance the aesthetic appeal of their room to their actual taste. Um, so these two actually will give them that extra modern piece of tech that they will remember after their stay and talk about to their friends and family and make them want to stay at your hotel more in the future as well. Um, then we have live streaming. So as already talked about, again, we provide uh, providing online services, maybe yoga classes, virtual tours for guests in their room for this in-room entertainment. Um, and this brings me to actually in-room automation. So this is where guests can control the room's temperature, lighting, and other settings using mobile devices in an app or the in-room tablets, for example. This technology is actually good for those travelers that prefer to be a little bit more lazy um, during their vacation and stay in bed while being able to control everything in the room, just staying in their bed comfortably. Um, technology also finally can be a digital concierge and a virtual assistant. So all the information that the guests need on one device, one app, and they can have the possibility to order and pay room service or, or breakfast via those devices in their, in their rooms, or even direct chat to, to the front desk staff. So they wouldn't need to move or go outside from their hotel room and able to, to ask anything for the staff. But it's also important to note that while implementing technology in your hotel, it is essential to pay attention to data security and guest privacy. SweetPad tablets, for example, um, we make our own devices um, and we decided to remove the built-in camera in the tablets for the guest's privacy. So the last slide of the presentation, this would be so to know how we can keep an actually good level between personalization and digitalization. This is what many hoteliers fear. Uh, people think that more technology means less personalization by the staff. This is actually a misconception because guests, they want a digital solution for the hotel experience. This is the modern guest. So you should provide these solutions to this modern, modern guest um, because they prefer this. They are used to it in their everyday life. They would like this during their vacation as well. And it would attract more um, of uh, these uh, visitors as well to your hotel. There's a high chance that these travelers will choose a hotel with this solution rather than a hotel that doesn't. And when guests are happy during this day, they tend to spend more money at your hotel. And um, the hotel stay in control of the guest loyalty as well during their stay. And the staff can create a much greater experience for the travelers. And technology helps personalize this experience they can analyze the guest's needs and preferences and modify their stay accordingly. The guests will remember then the hotel more because of it and will only have some positive feedback from their experience, thus bringing you, of course, more new customers and keeping these loyal customers. And also when the front staff's tasks are taken over, more or less by technology, check in, check out, hotel information, et cetera, they have more time to address the more complicated concerns and feedback during the guest stays. So all guests want today is to be comfortable, right, um, in their hotel. Um, they want the comfort of their home away from home. This is why it's so important for hotels to upgrade their services and modernize their hotel rooms uh, with the use of technology, for example. And airlines and airports have already done it with mobile boarding pass, online check-in, so why can't hotels do the same, right? Um, 
so I think now we've reached the end of the presentation webinar. We can go forward with the Q&A session, Magdalena, if you are ready as well. I am. Thank you, Emily. Yes. Perfect. And thank you um, for insights into technology. Yes, <laughs> this is very nice to 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 speak about it as well. Um, I am just checking now the the questions from the audience. We have, I think, the first one will be from you. Um, you have talked about a lot about purpose. Do you have any advice on how to discover the purpose of my hotel? Thank you for this question. And it's really a question we often get because, but in this audience, as mentioned, we had, I think, 40 or 43 percent who are already working on purpose, on purpose or having even activated the most sustainability activities there. So that's amazing. If you are start, just starting out to discover your purpose, and you are the owner, the boutique hotelier, and so on, always start with your personal purpose, because that's, in the end, your hotel. You are the one who has to live the purpose and show it to the employees, the guests, and so on. That means that the question, what's your purpose, hmm, might not be the easiest. If someone asks you that right at the beginning of the journey, therefore, always ask yourself, what are you against? What is in the world that really bothers you? What you would like to change, make an impact, and so on. If we work with investor boards and so on, where there is not that one person in charge of the hotel, it's a more technical discussion, of course, but it's always around what is first the P you would like the biggest impact. And when we think, for example, at the Sin and Gavin hotels, is there a specific group in that P where you would like to have the biggest impact? Because what purpose, what in the field of purpose is important, be specific. That needs to be a specific purpose, purpose you buy in, your team needs to buy in, your guests, your partners, and so on. Amazing. Thank you for that elaborate answer. Um, we have a next question here. Everybody is now talking or starting to talk about sustainability. Does it make sense for my hotel to become part of a cooperation or get certified? Yes, you also see that we are certified. We are B Corp certific certified company. Why? Because also in our area, now a lot of people talk about sustainability and we have learned consumers have lost their trust. So everybody can write, I'm sustainable now. But how do I believe that? Or oh, where is the stamp? Where is the guarantee? Where is the certification? There are two parts, furthermore, to the answer. First, if you are a business hotel, we strongly recommend to get certified. Certifications are a long process that involves a lot of steps. Why is it so important for business hotels? Sustainability is such a huge topic right now that big brands and companies have the pressure to become more sustainable. What's their first step? They say, my team members, my company employees, they are only going to sleep in sustainable hotels. And that means also there for business hotels, if you have a certification, if you can prove I'm really sustainable, Go for it, start the process as soon as possible. The second part, if you're a leisure hotel, you can think about first, for example, to join, sorry, to join a partnership. As we talked in the area of profit, that can be a marketing cooperation and so on, where you partner, where you learn, where you evolve. At one stage, we feel everybody needs to be certified in some way because the more the awareness with guests come, okay, this is now sustainable, these are really requirements, the more you have also to have your shit together. Sorry, I put it like this, but to make it very clear. So we, and a last recommendation here, go for international certification systems. Don't go for a very local or regional one 
it's where the future evolves, you will need these international standards for sustainability and especially for business hotels start as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, we have another question here as well. I understand that there must be diverse team for sustainability. Does a hotel need a sustainability manager separately or can it be merged to another role such as health and safety? Um, a sustainability manager, always depending on the size, the structure and so on of your hotel, I'm not sure if it's good to, to, so I have to start like this. If you are managing more hotels, if the size and structure allows it, yes, maybe go for it. However, always think that sustainability, what is sustainability? It's not that complicated. We are fair, we work with our resources, we try to be the kindest and respectful person we are. We see that everybody profits from our hotel. Now, this integrates in all areas of the hotel. So first of all, make sure that the whole team is aware what journey you are on. That will be your biggest force. And then what we see very often when we start to process that there are already team members who are very much on their own sustainability journey. So empower them make them their brand ambassadors, their sustainability ambassadors. And don't try to make this now a very complicated thing. There is a new function that are the new SOPs and these are the new rules, but make it like a journey together. Therefore, we also did a journey today where we can work together, learn together and so on. So try to make it like part of your culture, part of your discussions, part of your emails, part of your internal communications then you will see the most success. Thank you so much, Magdalena. I think um, that ends the questions here. Unless someone would is interested in something else, of course, you can always reach out, as you can see on the presentation here, um, to Magdalena directly. And also an answer to, we will send you an email. You will always have, uh, of course, us. We will be able to answer anything that you would like after the webinar. So... Thank you so much, Magdalena, for today's webinar. Thank you for everyone joining, and we will send you the recording later this week. We wish you a great day ahead. Bye-bye.